What's up, friends? So here we are again. Another mural. This one has got to be one of my favorite spots. Look at this. This is at the Atlanta Braves field in Northport. Uh, it's actually between Venice and Northport. It's where the Braves do their spring training. So they found me um, online through my Inglewood mural that I just recently finished and uh, contacted me and asked me if I'd work on a couple art projects for them. And, you know, how could I say no to something like this? I mean, not very often you get to paint at a Major League Baseball stadium. So I jumped on board and uh, we got some ideas rolling. So this is the first of two murals that I'm doing. This one is a postcard. So fans, when they're watching the game, they can get their photos with this thing and, you know, they can share it on Instagram. It's, it's one of those Instagrammable uh, photo opportunities, I guess you could say. So this is going to be a postcard and it's going to have obviously a beach scene because we are in Florida and we want to make sure that these fans can take a picture uh, with a background that relates to where they're located so that people know that they're not in Atlanta, that they're in Florida. So I start out dividing this kind of in half. This is a horizon line. I do the sky and then I'm actually not doing a blue water. Uh, I'm just doing like a reflective uh, sunset water. So it's going to be more of a yellowish color and I uh, paint that a beige color as, a, as my base. And then I get started with this frame here and I want this frame to look like vintage paper, uh, kind of like it's to a torn edge, not perfect, just kind of nice and organic. So the next step is to take some uh, spray paint of two different shades of blue and I'm just gonna kind of randomly spray these on in spots just to give the sky a little bit of depth and uh, just some alternate colors rather than just one solid blue because the sky is uh, very rarely ever just one solid blue color. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and start painting my sun reflection on top of the horizon here on the surface of the water. So I'm just starting with a solid orange. And then the lower I go, basically the more I fade out that orange until I get to a point where I'm just basically drawing little, uh, little five to six inch uh, lines left to right, just to kind of give the illusion of ripples in the water. And it's really that simple. This is something that anybody could do. Uh, just with a little bit of practice, you can kind of perfect this. This isn't rocket science. This is just kind of replicating what I see in photos and reference images that I take. All right, so next step is to get the lettering up on here. And this is gonna say, welcome to Brave Spring Training. I'm using a classic old school overhead projector with the clear film like we used in school in the 80s and 90s. Uh, millennials probably have no clue what I'm talking about and uh, that's cool so anyways once I get the letters lined out with some chalk I just use some gray chalk to do that and I go ahead start spray painting the sky I'm gonna go with an orange to match up with the horizon line of the water and then I'm gonna fade that out to a yellow and once that's kind of finished there's really really not much to that so I move on to the lettering and now what I'm doing is I'm taking a transparent black it's a Montana spray can. It's more of like an artistic mural spray paint can for graffiti and things like that. And this is transparent, so it doesn't go down super uh, thick and opaque like a solid black. It actually uh, allows you to see through the black and see whatever's behind it. So it's like a true shadow if you perfect it right. So I do that and then I go in with some black paint and a small thin brush and I, I go over my chalk lines. Uh, and just make them more visible so I can work with them a lot easier. And then I take a wet rag and I, if there's any excess chalk lines, I'll wipe those off with a wet rag. And I won't bore you with every single square foot of this, so we'll move on. Uh, so now I'm gonna take a white paint, just solid white and a little brush, and uh, just go back over the word welcome to, or two words. Welcome to with some white and it really makes it jump off the background and that shadow allows it to give some depth and separation. So then after I do that, I come back down here and I'm going to add shadows of that transparent black to the lower letters. So this is probably more challenging to somebody who hasn't done this to have that kind of can control and I'm not even really the, the greatest spray paint artist that there is I'm I'm mediocre uh, average I suppose compared to a lot of people that I that I follow on uh, Instagram and on YouTube so I uh, just roll with it and do the best I can take your time and you can actually con control the spray paint pretty well 
All right, so now that my words are all lined out and shadowed, I'm gonna go ahead and take some different colors here. I got red, pink, a very light pink, and then a white. And I'm gonna use this two inch brush right here. It's actually falling apart, so I'm using some masking tape to hold it together. The thing has been through a lot, but it lays down paint nice. So I'm gonna start adding a gradient into these letters. And I based them out in a light pink with spray paint because <clears throat> it's a good color to base it out in considering uh, I'm, I'm having a, a red and white gradient. The pink just, just works out well. So I do a red and then I layer in some pink and the key is to make sure the paint stays wet and that allows you to blend it better. You don't wanna just lay all of your red down and then let that dry and then come back in with your pink and whites. And I kind of show you that here. So all this red paint is kind of wet going over top of wet pink paint and it just allows it to blend super smoothly almost as smooth as if you were taking a spray paint can and doing it and uh, so i just make sure all those lines are going horizontal and they match up like it's one continuous gradient through the entire word and you can see that by some chalk lines i drew so that's done and then i went ahead and just got some solid black paint and outlined that whole braves uh word uh, with a two inch Oh, actually a little bit over a two inch outline around the whole entire word. And then I moved down to spring training here and covered it back up with some white to cover up any overspray from the shadowing. So the idea for this word is to make, make it somewhat resemble the, pat, uh, the number patches on the backs of jerseys. So if you look at any sort of jersey numbers, you can see that there's usually three colors involved. A lot of times two colors, but sometimes three. So I'm adding in this blue uh, which is the second color of the Braves, red and blue. You see it often. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this whole entire word. And this is where uh, a steady hand really comes into play because I'm not using any sort of straight edge or, or anything or any correct spacing or whatever. To make this easier, it's just a steady hand to make sure that um, you get a nice clean line. Take your time on this. This took quite a while, but it's really worth the extra time and effort. And this is the almost finished product of that word. I use the, project, uh, the projector because it eliminates um, any mistakes in the words because when you're painting words, and especially this size or larger, if, if the letter is off just a bit, you're really gonna notice it. And this needs to look as professional as possible. I want it to look like a decal stuck on the wall that was cut out with a, a printer and a plotter. I want it to be that precise. So. It came out pretty well. All right, so moving on, now we're working on the water. This is the beach water sort of washing up onto the sand. Just real small, not even waves, just, just small little, you know, foamy types of things rolling up on shore here. So I'm basing it out in a gray as my darker tones. I did some transparent black lines there to create the, you know, the, the front edge of each of those little waves. And then after I base it out in gray, uh, I leave the gray kind of thin so you can see some of that beige coming through like you would in an actual beach. And then I lay in some white to do the foam. And I worked on that a little bit more and I didn't record every little bit of it because it was kind of boring once I did the playback of it. So I skipped that and I moved on to the palm tree. Now the palm tree can be very tricky to paint and make it look very realistic. Anybody can paint a palm tree. They're actually very simple if you just want a basic looking palm tree, an effective one. So I'm just going for pretty realistic in this postcard. So you gotta start with your dark colors first because if you look at a palm tree, it's not just all green palm fronds. There's browns, there's beiges and stuff. And you gotta start from your dark colors and move to your light colors. So after my dark, dark brown palm fronds were uh, basically painted out where I wanted them, then I come back through with uh, a green that I mixed with a beige and it kinda gives it like this army green color. And then I just basically go over the same method, just long little streaks of green. And I'm not going over top of the brown, I'm going over some of them, I'm going in between them because I want it to look actual 3D and have depth. And then I do a little beige highlights on top of that green. And then I move on to these flowers. So I'm doing some palm fronds. I did a bird of paradise, which I somehow forgot to film. So that sucks, because that was one of the best parts of this whole thing. Uh, so I move on from there, do the palm fronds, and then I'm doing some flowers on top, of the, on top of those. And I really want them to stick out from the edge of the postcard to give it more of like a 3D look and more, um, 
I don't know, more depth. I love depth. I love layering things, overlapping things, and then adding a little shadow underneath, underneath each one of those things, and it just kind of helps them stand out and doesn't look so flat and boring, I guess you could say. So then I continue to work on these flowers. I'm just kind of working some stripes, working some different paints, see what works well. I have a reference image, but uh, I never, I never follow them 100% because once you get to the wall, things change. I don't know. Kind of add my little twist. So I'm working on these flowers and then I'll move on to my favorite part, which is the pelican. I probably ramble on a little bit too much in these videos, but I get so many people asking me, do, do I do this freehand, the people that are walking around at the stadium? Do I do it freehand? Do I, how, how do I go about it? And I basically just tell them I, I have a reference image printed out on a piece of paper. Um, the lettering I, I don't freehand, but everything else I pretty much freehand. I just kind of copy what's on my reference image of the mural that I created on Photoshop, and I just go for it. So moving into the pelican here, he's up top, and again, I want him extending out past the frame of the postcard. So it brings it more to life, animates it a little bit more, so the wings are extending out past the frame. And I painted a lot of pelicans over time. I could probably paint one in my sleep right now. Um, but that's cool. Um, that's all about Florida, and that's, you know, pelicans are everywhere, so they're included in a lot of what I do when I'm doing a Florida-themed mural, so. Back to why we're here, the baseball, right? So I'm just adding a stitching. I did a little shadowing underneath with that transparent black just to give it some, make it look like it's actually round and stuck to the wall. And here's the final product. Again, that water was just kind of like a yellowish chrome. I saw a sunset a couple weeks ago like this and I really wanted to try to replicate that as if the sun was already sunken below the horizon and the surface of the water is just like a reflective neon yellow chrome. So we got the plants sticking out from the frame and uh, welcome to Brave Spring Training. So hopefully people will get their photos with this nonstop at these games. I, I really hope to see this on Instagram and the stadium is actually going to collect the photos based on the hashtag Cool Today Park. They're gonna grab those photos of fans with this postcard and they're gonna display them during games out on the 100 foot some TV screen in left field so I can't wait to go to a game and see this postcard even larger uh, it's really awesome thank you to everybody at the Brave Stadium really appreciate you guys this was an honor and I'll show you the next mural I did over the Tiki Bar coming up next follow me on mattmccasterart.com see ya